Welcome. I am so excited that you are here. Thank you for taking some time during your busy weekend and getting up early, some of you, um, to be a part of this. And so what we're going to do is we are going to generate some excitement and hopefully a little bit of um, new knowledge gained about the new um, beautiful January to April mini catalog and the celebration catalog, um, both of which are very new uh, and live now. So what I have planned for us is we are going to walk through the books kind of page by page and just talk about things. I'm going to show you some things. Um, I have two of my very good friends here, part of the Butterfly team, and I have uh, another team member who is um, in Alaska who got up so incredibly early this morning to be a part of this, and she's going to show us some things too. So you won't have to just look at my face this whole time. You can, you're can you going to get to meet some new people, and I will introduce them as they are ready to um, share with you. So let me switch over to my, there we go. Okay, so you should be looking at my desktop right now with some crazy numbers, right? Some crazy numbers there. So I just thought we would break down the catalog by numbers. Okay, so let's see. Um, does anybody have any guesses about what these numbers might mean in reference to the catalog? And I'm talking about this beautiful purple guy right here. Is this just the most amazing catalog cover? Am I the only one that thinks that this is the most beautiful one? <laughs> All right, look at these numbers. Look at these numbers. All right, so any guesses? Put your guesses in the chat. Um, they all have meaning, so let's pick one. Let's pick the number eight. All right, the number eight. Guess what the eight means? There are eight sweets in the new catalog. And a suite is a collection of products that all go together. And Stampin' Up! has finally made it easy for us to just use one number and purchase a whole suite at one time, right? All right, so eight suites in the catalog. 91. Any guesses? What do you think? What do you think 91 means? <laughs> oh, good guess that you think these are page numbers. They're not page numbers. 91 is the number of pages in the book. Total. All right. What about 54? <laughs> Nydia, your kitty loves the purple catalog too. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. 54 stamp sets in our catalog. 54. Oof. That's a lot. Yep. 54 stamp sets. All right. Let's look at number five. What could, could this be? There's five of something in the catalog. Punches, Nydia. Yeah, Sherry. Five punches, five brand new punches. All right, 31. What could we have? Robin guess dies. That's very close. 31 actually refers to how many bundles there are. So there's 31 bundles that are 10% off. Nice, right? Okay. Let's do one. This one's tricky. Number one. What is there one of? <laughs> one catalog. I love it. Well, one catalog to please us all. <laughs> 
Number one stands for uh, our memories and more kit. There's one memories and more kit. All right. 27. Twenty-seven new die sets. Of course, some of those are bundled, right? Some of those are bundled, but twenty-seven new die sets. All right, fourteen. I think Robin Walson's been studying. She's <laughs> correct. Fourteen designer series paper packs. Fourteen new delicious papers to feast on. <laughs> Number 11. This is embellishments. 11 new embellishments. That's a lot. That's a lot, right? All right. Number three. There's actually two sets of three. <laughs> I, Sh Cheryl and Sue are whispering over here and they're <laughs> correct. So Cheryl said three tools. There's three new tools. Wendy, yes, three offers to join. You are right. You're oh, right. Oh, there's oh, three, that's... there's three sets of three. So three new tools, three new embossing folders, and three offers to join. You're right, Wendy. <laughs> All right, number six, six new ribbons, six new ribbons. And last but not least, the number two, any guesses? So there are two hostess only items that only hostesses can get. All right, so that's the breakdown by numbers. Let's take a look at this amazing book. And we're gonna start on the very first page. And I just wanna make sure, cause I know some of you are new, um, that you understand kind of how things are broken down. So we talked about the fact that there were eight suites and here are the eight suites by their name and the page number here. So it makes it really easy to find. But if you want to know about those bundles, because there's 31 bundles, then this great index back here on page 76, that's where it starts. And this is where you can find all the bundles together. So I love that this little index um, is an addition to the catalogs these days, because it makes it really easy then to um, kind of view the catalog in two different ways. And um, what I always forget to do when I get to this um, bundle index is to look at the samples because the samples are totally different than they are throughout the rest of the catalog. So um, when you need extra ideas, definitely don't forget to look at the um, I don't know why, but I always kind of overlook these samples and they're great samples. All right, so 31 bundles that are 10% off. All right, so here's the bundles. Here's something new right here. Okay, so Stampin' Up! is test um, testing something new by offering some stamp sets in cling or some stamp sets in the photopolymer. So you have a choice. And these are the ones that are available. One, two, three, uh, four, five. So there's five stamp sets available um, that you can choose. So let's just look at one here so you can see. So for example, Lighting the Way, this is page 18. It also talks about it right here. Um, so I just marked these in yellow. I'm not showing that yet. Oh, I'm just talking about this. Oh, I'm Thank you. <laughs> so here you can see right here, the C and the P. So you can choose whether you want um, the bundle or the stamp set. You have to pick whether you want clear mount, 
or cling, cling, sorry, or photopolymer. So there's, um, it's the same price actually. So that's kind of nice. So they're just seeing if um, Stampin' Up! is just kind of testing this to see uh, what people, if they like that option or not. So definitely give some feedback. Um, if you're a demonstrator watching this, definitely share your feedback um, on the website, uh, what you think about that. So I think that this wasn't advertised very well, so it might be new information to you, but that is an option. Um, which I totally didn't know when I ordered from the catalog. So um, I like that. I personally like that, that that's a choice. Okay, let's see. Back to the table of contents. Those were the main things I wanted to point out. These um, catalog icons here, these are not new, um, but they do give you little informational tips as you walk through the book. Um, I especially like to pay attention to the die sets that work with the mini cut and emboss machine. So that is one that you want to just watch um, if you have that mini machine. So you kind of know what's going to work. All right. So if you are brand, brand new, the other thing you might not notice, which is kind of important, at the very back of the catalog, I'm start on page 84, we've got... Um, the catalog at a glance, and it's broken apart by stamp sets and then dies. And so you get a tiny little picture of what, um, what the stamp set looks like. And this is in alphabetical order. So if you happen to know the name of the stamp set you're looking for, that's helpful. Um, I never do. So I have to use the pictures to find, to find mine, but this is a really helpful index. And of course the stamps are in pink and then the dyes um, are on in the, this black here, but that's real. this is a really helpful index page. And when you are looking at your images in the catalog, um, I always forget to mention this, but it's kind of important. All of the images are the size that they stamp unless it says differently. So for example, on page 61, yes, I did, 61. For example, this die set right here, this is shown at actual size, but these are not. So it's the same with the stamp images. If they happen to make something smaller, it will say whether it is shown smaller, but otherwise you can um, you can pretty much know that what you see is the size that um, it's gonna stamp. So that's really helpful. The last thing, these is like catalog basics here, just in case just in case. I'm on page 16 and 17. Anytime you see an image that has um, like an outline around it, that's like a matte layer, that means there's a die or a punch that is going to coordinate with directly with that image, and it's going to be able to be cut out with that punch or that die. So that is really helpful when you're looking through um, that you can see. Now this stamp set right here, which I'm going to show you a little bit, um, this one has dies that make more like labels. So it's giving you examples of which images you could use with those labels. So look for those outlines so that you know if it's going to be able to be cut out. So for example, here's another page, this queen bee. You can see the outline here because this is a white page. The outline is actually in like a cream color. And so you can see the images that will be cut out by the dies. So that's really helpful to know too. Um, if you're a, a really visual person, you can really get a lot of information there. Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Last thing I wanna point out, um, if you are a demonstrator watching this and you are a paper pumpkin fan, or if you are um, new and you are thinking about paper pumpkin, um, during celebration, this is the absolute best time to get your paper pumpkin subscription because you earn free 
celebration items with your subscription. So if you get a three month subscription, you get one celebration item. Um, sixth month, you get uh, two. Twelve month, you get four. So it's a great time to, um, and you earn hostess dollars on that um, 12 month. So think about that. You can utilize your um, your uh, dollars in a really, really good way and then set you up for like 12 months of paper pumpkin. Okay, now we're gonna walk through. We got some samples to share. So Denise asks, what is the important difference between cling or photopolymer? So when they're offering this, that's a really good question. Thank you, Denise. Um, let's go back to our lightning stamp set here. Um, cling is red rubber with foam attached. And Photopolymer is the clear rubber. So a lot of times that choice of whether they're cling or photopolymer is already made for you by Stampin' Up! because it may be a stamp set that needs to be um, lined up like a two-step stamping. And so they automatically put it on photopolymer to make that easier. So in the case of this stamp set though, this one is just personal preference. Do you like using the photopolymer where you can see through the image on your, um, you know, see through the, the block and the image to where you're stamping on your project um, as opposed to photopolymer? Uh, cling, sorry. <laughs> I personally feel like the cling mount stamps stamp better. I like the images that I get more consistently from them, but that's my personal preference. Um, but we don't always have that choice. And sometimes that choice, like I said, is is directly related to the fact that the stamps need to be lined up. Um, and so you would want them to be able to see through them and that you would want them to be photopolymer. Robin, um, yeah. Rita, Rita has a question. Um, is there a way to tell if the dies are going to cut the images out of the coordinating DSP? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I don't think that they they tell us that. It's just a happy um, discovery when you get your pack of designer series paper. Um, they should though. That's a yeah. really good. We need to put in the suggestion yeah, box. we need to put that in the suggestion box, Rita. Um, So I'm just looking at page 21 and I don't have this um, stamp set, so I don't know, but this coordinates with one of the celebration papers. Do you guys know, does this, do these work on any of the papers? I think, I think it's some, I of think yeah. they do. I think, mm -hmm. yeah, so um, it's kind of something that you find out when you, um, when when somebody showcases um, the the suite of products with the paper and the dies. That's a good question. Uh, Sue is writing it down. She's going to put it in the sandbox. Okay. Let's start with the country floral lane suite. It's right there next oh, to you. It's right here next to me. I'm sure you guys have been seeing this all around the Stampin' Up! world. This amazing, fun paper that is not only a little bit Valentine's ish but also very springy which is very exciting love the color combinations um, that you can make with this we've got sweet sorbet balmy blue mossy meadow mint macaron petal pink great colors great colors and of course in this suite, we have the gingham paper as well. Gingham paper is like divine. You can just put it on any little piece, large or small, and it just makes your project better. It just does. And we've got our double-sided there. So that is a great pack of paper. And then we have ribbons. 
little two pack of ribbons. It's just beautiful. Um, it's a really interesting choice because this crumb cake is called craft burlap, real red and burlap, but it looks like crumb cake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which that isn't a color necessarily in the paper. It's just a nice neutral, but it's got the nice stitched edge. It's really thin, so it's easy to fold. And then this nice silky red ribbon coordinates with it. So it's really fun to use. And I keep forgetting and it's pull not, that out. It, it's not like burlap. No, it's not like burlap at all. It's it's really smooth. And then here are the adhesive sequins come in two sizes. They're just beautiful. All right, let's look at some projects with this. We've got some amazing samples here that Cheryl and Sue have put together. So this looks like a gatefold card. Oh my goodness. Somebody explain, what is this? Just bend it backwards. Oh, look at this. What's it called, Cheryl? Um, good question. <laughs> We're not right now. Look at that fun card. It's like a bendy pop, thing. Pop, yes, bend, bendy pop out card. There we go. A bendy pop out card. And it's like a gatefold, too. Yes. This is beautiful. That's really cute. All right. And then here's another one with the greens and the pinks and that beautiful punch. This one just needs a greeting. You saving that? You don't know what I need it. Mm -hmm. I, I see. I never do that. It's so smart. I like that you put the stem on here, Cheryl. This yeah. looks, I love it. It looks like a little um, um, actual little heart flower or a little lollipop. That's beautiful. Wow. You've been busy. This is another Cheryl card. Last card. <laughs> Robin. Yes. Um couple questions. Can you stamp sentiments on the craft ribbon? And then also, how did you do the corners? And I'm not sure which. I think it's this one. This one has the corners, I think. Um this is a punch that is a carryover item, which I actually forgot to point out that page, but it's on page. 74 of the catalog. It's this punch right here. And you can see that little corner right there. And so um, that's how you get the corners on that. So you can get a straight corner. You can get this kind of um, looks to me like um, molding, uh, crown molding, or you can yeah, get a little um, rectangle that'll, or a ribbon like a ribbon holder. I think that's the one, Cheryl, that you're talking about. Yes. Okay. Uh, what was the other question? Crafting sentiments on the ribbon. I don't know. Or I mean, putting I sentiments on I would think so. Okay. I'm going to put Sue on it. We've got a um, ink pad here. We'll see. There's some stamp sets over there. All okay. Right. Let's keep looking at this amazing bundle here. Oh, I love this. This is actually... This little piece right here is ending up being one of my favorite parts, images in this um, suite. Let me get you a close up of the stamp set. Here is the country bouquet. This little image right here is just so sweet. It makes the greatest background. I love that. I love that we are friends. That's a great greeting. Here's that background right here. It's just so pretty. We just made this yesterday and this one. These were so much fun. All right, so this suite 
is great. I think that it has uses beyond Valentine's Day, but it does look very Valentine's Day-ish. So um, if you probably already have your cards done for Valentine's Day, but if not, or if you do, you can um, save it for next year, right? Okay, our next stamp set is a bundle called Love For You Dies. And I have something to show here. So this is a fun, um, also kind of Valentine's y, I guess. I mean, it is, but you, there's other options here. So what I like about this um, bundle is the words. I'm all about the words usually 100% um, of the time. And so this is one of those stamp sets with the dies that you can get three different um, sizes to go with your images. So you've got a nice detailed way to cut out the, um, the actual words and then you can cut out the stamps and the words and then you can make a piece that goes with it. So let me show you what I mean. Here is my homework here. Robin, do you have a block handy? You know, but I know, but I need one. Sorry. Okay. You want me to go upstairs and get this? <laughs> We're in my dining room today so that we would not be so crowded in my stamp room. I don't know if you noticed I'm in a different locale. But um, yes, so we had to, to bring a lot of things down here. So this is kind of nice because here's the stamp, the stamped image, those are connected. Then you can use the this die on those images and they will cut them out like this. So they separate the words and they leave this beautiful little border around your stamping. Then you can use this larger die to create the bubble or the mat behind those words. And so, um, so here is the difference here. I cut out the words here. I just stamped and cut out in the bubble. So you've got some options with that. Here are the small little um, dies. And then the other thing you might not notice is there's all these little greetings. So not only is there an anniversary, but there's Valentine's Day, there's congratulations, and then there's some just nice little friends and then a thank you um, kind of greeting, tiny little heart stamps, and then these fun little floral um, flowers. They look kind of tropical to me, but it's a really neat combination of items. So we are going to get ready to make the first make and take. So if you are making along with me, then um, you want to get your little kit out. Let me show you a sample here with this stamp set before I put that away. So this is just a monochromatic card and I put um, this sparkle paper behind it. Oops, my heart fell off. Heart goes there. There we go. Okay. So Robin, okay. Uh it's it not runs. It's, well, it's my inking and trying to get a block and everything, but I would say that you could work with it and stamp on the ribbon. So here's our test. This is like a this is like a live, like a live test kitchen here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm not a certified chef. So <laughs> That's why but they you are a certified uh, demonstrator. I didn't really want to reveal that. Well, <laughs> so um, this is using the Memento Black ink on that ribbon, and it looks like it kind of it ran a little bit. Or I got the top part yeah, too. So inked. probably depends on how um, inky your pad is. Mm -hmm. And that was without a. That was trying it without, without a, a block. block. <laughs> it was my cell phone. <laughs> When you don't have a block, use the your cell phone. I like it. I like it. That's yeah, practical. I think it's, it's workable. Like, for when sure. you don't have your stamp cleaner, you just you lick it, right? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that 
that's been known to happen. Yeah, I think that was a funny. I think I did it once or twice. Okay. So we are going to do our first make and take, which is the purple card. I put a link in the chat for um, the PDF. I did email. If you registered for this event, I emailed you with the um, information and the PDF is on a, a landing page. That, so you can go and you can download the PDF if you haven't done that already. And it has the three projects and then it has the supplies. Um, that were used for all the projects. I'll put the link in the chat again. Thank you. Yep. So I don't know that I've ever told this story, but um, I, uh, when I got invited to my very first Stampin' Up! party, it was like 26 years ago. And we were in somebody's basement. There was probably 20 people there back when parties were a thing <laughs> or more of a thing, I guess. And the demonstrator at the time brought only a black ink pad and she didn't even use Stampin' Up! cardstock. She brought, um, she brought five by seven uh, file cards, index cards, colored index cards the blank ones and we folded them in half and we used her black ink pad and we stamped a um, black moon with a, a, a black witch in the sky and I thought it was the greatest thing I had ever seen in my whole life I was hooked um, and that, that was all it took, right. To, I'm sure you have a Stampin' Up! story too, right? How did you get introduced to, um, Stampin' Up! And, um, you know, some of you have been around for a while. You probably got to go to a party. Some of you are new and you've probably only seen Stampin' online. So we all have our, our own stories. I'm going to ask, um, Sue and Cheryl to tell their story too, when they share with you and Tamara, um, but that's my beginning. And then shortly after that, I come to find out that my sister Star had been to a Stampin' Up! party too. And she had the catalog and she shared it with me. And um, oh my goodness, it would, I just, you know, I, I never looked back. And then Star was the one who hosted my first um, actual party that I did for me at her um, apartment. And it was so sweet. So that is my Stampin' Up! beginning. All right, so we're gonna make this card and I used those dies from the Love For You bundle to um, cut out this Love You. And this is the shimmer um, paper that goes with a, a suite that we're gonna talk about a little bit later. And it's gorgeous. The shimmer paper is just gorgeous. So this card um, that I designed is a template card that you can use over and over. Um, and it kind of showcases a pack of designer series paper or different papers, whatever goes together. So it requires at least three pieces of designer series paper. Um, one of them should be kind of busy and have like all the colors that you're using. One should be a little bit more subtle. Um, and that, that one kind of looks better if it's this one that's right in the middle. And then one um, has like a contrast and pulls in another bright color. And that one's just gonna peek out on the side. If it's a stripe, that looks really, really cool. So I'm gonna make this basic, just like my sample, but if you want to put this together a little bit later, you can take this pink piece and you can stamp a background on it. Um, this is petal pink, so you could do tone on tone. You could run this through an embossing folder. Well, let's just do that. You want to run that through the embossing folder for me? You can pick the flowers or the that one. 
So while she's doing that, we're going to put this label together. While we watch, I just yeah. want to, there were some helpful tips about um, when you said you lick it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wendy, did I say that out loud? What, you did. And Wendy okay. help, helpfully said, no, you wipe it on your jeans. I'm just. Oh, I've done that too. Yeah, I've yeah. done that too. That don't works really well. Lick it. Don't lick it. Well, no. sometimes, sometimes <laughs> stuff happens in the stamp room, room that just stays in the stamp room. And a lot of excitement over this. Um, set that you're using very very pretty if it's not really use that so this tag is from the fancy fancy tags i believe it's called uh i'm going to showcase those in a minute love them This paper is from Dandy Designs. So which the, is the camera's not over there while I'm picking things up. <laughs> which I've been using just the heck out of. And oh, it's so lovely. It's just beautiful. It just coordinates as like four pieces that all go together um, for each kind of little color um, combination. And each side is prettier than the next side. So I've been just using that paper a lot. <clears throat> it's an item you can get with um, get an order for free. Here's the colors. Look at these colors, mango. And granny apple green, our beautiful petal pink and um, calypso coral combination, balmy blue, fresh freesia, and coastal cabana. So lovely. So this heart is from the heart punch, which is not called that, it's called country bouquet punch. Um, it's also, the, one quick thing, I don't remember who it was, it was a while ago, and that is what she was talking about, said that that punch looks like an angel if it's upside down. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, gosh, that's that crazy. was Polly. Polly said that. Yeah. Polly needs to make that into a card for us so we can see that in action, because I, I agree, that would be really cute. All right, so Cheryl has embossed that for me so we can see she picked the pretty petals doesn't um, say oh i see it pretty petals pretty yes. petals pretty petals so that adds a nice little extra um texture so this piece right here just gets mounted right even with this left side so that you have a nice um even amount on the side and the top and the bottom and then this piece here, which is three and a half by two. So these are both two inches. So we're going to just um, center this one and overlap it by an inch. But I'm sorry, before you do that, you're really supposed to put this underneath. Good thing we're using liquid glue, sorry. Tuck that little guy under there and that gets centered there and you can make as much or as little of that show okay now we're going to pop up the tag and you can put that anywhere, but I'm going to overlap the papers. It's going to be a little bit left of the center of the card. 
And then you should have this little tiny strip. This is also one of the dandy design papers. And this is great if you don't have ribbon to um, match your card, just cut a tiny eighth inch little strip of paper. And if you use your bone folder, which I forgot to bring down here, so I'm just using my fingers and you um, just kind of break it down by rolling it so that it's bendy and you can make it as a ribbon. So just carefully close that knot and then you can attach it to your card. Yes. Do you want me to get you your bone folder? Uh, I'm more than happy to. Sure. That'd be great. Can you think of anything else before I have to make an extra trip? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so um, decide how long you want those ends and then you can just trim that off. So um, don't forget to use your papers as ribbons too to coordinate everything together. Now you're either gonna have some um, yellow dots or the purple dots. And these are from the Glossy Dot Collection. And here are the other two colors. There's this beautiful pink. This actually coordinates with the um, paper in the regular catalog which is called what is it called uh yeah i don't know the really pretty one that that i love and so you can put these little dots anywhere you want on your card just put them in like a triangle formation Okay, thank you, Sue. You're welcome. Perfect. Now it'll stay closed. Okay, so there's our finished little card. I hope you guys love that one. For any occasion, right? Any occasion. Doesn't have to be Valentine's Day. All right, let me show you some other samples with this template because now that you have this, you can make a bunch of different cards. So this is the celebration paper called On the Barn. I think so. <laughs> Let's just take a peek at it. <laughs> oh, day at the farm. This is free paper. I think this is the cutest paper I've ever seen. Well, that's... That's a high bar, but I do love this paper. It's very unique. So here's this sample. Here is the um, dainty, what's it called? Flowers? <laughs> dainty flowers. Okay, here's another embossing folder, another one of those tags. So you can add extra embellishments. Here is the, um, Petal Park paper. Regency. Regency Park paper. Any uh, size of your, um, for that focal point, you know, anything will fit on there, any um, shape. Guess who this one's going to? Don't look, <laughs> Don't look Star. Yeah. Um, Robin, what's the word set on Dainty Designs card? What's on the what? Which, oh, this what is, is the word oh. set on the Dainty Designs card? This is from the, uh, <laughs> I wish I had a better working yeah, memory. It's the one we could pre-order um, as demonstrators and it is, in this catalog. Is it just sayings? No, framed florets, page 65. That this is this birthday um gr greeting is I've been using on almost every card. Here it is. This is page 65. I love, I love these greetings. They are lovely. 
All right, here's two more with this design. This is the country floral. There's my favorite little background stamp right there. And then um, here's another thing you can do with this layout. If you want, you can add a piece of vellum um, under and over behind, and it just adds a little um, extra way to kind of spruce it up. Here's where you can not put this extra piece on there, do some stamping on the background. All right, so you've got a new template to use. Okay. All right. Hope you enjoyed that one. Here is that paper that we just used. In case you haven't seen this book before, <laughs> this is free with $100 order. It's 48 sheets. It's going to last you a long time. You can make a lot of cards with that beautiful paper. All right, so there's a couple things that um, you don't want to miss. And there are, remember we talked about there being 11 new embellishments. Um, this is one of them that's kind of hidden in the catalog. These opaque adhesive back gems, beautiful colors, gorgeous grape, melon, mambo, fresh freesia, and white. And so you can use these with all kinds of um, a different designer series papers. And, um, you know, they don't coordinate specifically with any suite. So it's just nice to have extra. I love the um, embellishments that have three sizes like this. So you get a ton of these. So that is there on page 13. So you don't want to miss that because it's partially hidden here. So you just like... Uh, you might miss it, right? Okay, here's our little kitty cats. For our love cats. They're lovely, so much fun. What do you need? Um, nothing. There you go. And now we come to this Fancy Flora Suite here. This is a suite that has two bundles that coordinate together, but also stand alone. And the suite has specialty paper, embellishments, ribbon, and paper. So let me showcase this for you. It's right here. Oh, okay. Now, how many people already have this um, suite? Let's leave me a comment. Let me know what you what you've done with it. So, um, I've just been playing with it a little bit. I'm hoping there's going to be a um, Stampin' Up! video that shows the artist who created these canvases that created this paper because uh, it looks like it was a lot of fun using acrylic paint. So this is one side. It's like it's almost um, overwhelming how many different designs there are and they're all beautiful. And their back sides coordinate with different patterns, so many, a little bit more subtle. So the paper really stands alone. Yeah, if you don't like the any of the bundles, this paper is would be a great package to get. Here are the colors. I think I'll just move this right here yeah. in this paper. Look how many colors there are. It's 
So you, it's surely going to coordinate with something that you have, right? All those different colors. Beautiful, beautiful. I love that this orchid. Uh, opulence. No. Oh, <laughs> that's what I thought it should be. Does anybody remember who's been around for a long time? There used to be a color called orchid opulence. It didn't look like anything like this. It was very bright. I cannot remember the name of this one, except that it has orchid in it, because I want to say orchid it's opulence. The, it's the new um, I know. in color. I, well, wait. Uh, no. I think and here's good. this great shimmer paper. You get two pieces of each. has a beautiful gold, the fresh freesia, and then the mint macaron. And it's, um, I hope that they come out with more <laughs> papers like this because thank you, Orchid Oasis. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Brain Collective is on fire. Thank you. Um, it's so easy to cut because it's not a rough shimmer. So it's it's really easy to punch. And you saw how the die cut worked with it. It's it's gorgeous. So highly recommend this paper. Whether you get this sweet or not, you can use these colors um, with anything. All right, so I've worked on my homework with these two bundles because there's dies, obviously, with that go with the stamp set. So let's talk about something fancy first. And I put together some combinations for these dies. So the die set's pretty amazing. I've already been using, um, using it quite a bit. The unique feature that um, I, I like are these little dies that you can put into the tags and get these little special cutouts. Um, so you can do some fun like inlaid um, die kind of techniques or you can just use them as holes for ribbon. And so I put some combinations together. I made some frames and inserted. So you can really easily just put two of these together on your, um, when you emboss them and make it a little frame. Lots of different things that you can do. So this is, um, probably my second favorite thing in the catalog, I would say. And then we have this fun floral, which I'm going to just say if, uh, when I, um, I ended up getting it because, <laughs> true confession, I ended up getting it because I just wanted to order the one button, sweet button. For this right it was just so much easier so I, I I wasn't in love with these flowers initially because they kind of look like a lot of flower sets I've had in the past but I don't have anything quite like it right now but now that I played with it as with every everything once you play with it you realize like okay yeah this has got <laughs> this has got a lot of neat features to it so what is unique about this stamp set and die bundle is that everything, every single image um, is two-step. Well, no, every single image can be cut out. All the flowers um, are two-step. And so all there's five, one, two, three, four, five flowers, and then this little cluster, and then two different leaves, and they, they all get cut out. And so it's really easy um, to use. And then there's this tiny little little background, which um, you could do, I don't know, you could do all kinds of things with. The other piece is this beautiful die that cuts out this great um, background that you can use um, that looks like that. This is the this is the best reason to get this bundle because it's really pretty. So I wanted to just show you a little bit how this goes together. And I'm going to give you my one tip here. So I'm gonna, I picked out these colors to go together with this card that I'm making, even though Flirty Flamingo isn't technically a color in the um, the paper, uh, it kind of goes with the, the coral and the petal pink. So I'm gonna use that. 
Here's a second block. Okay. So this is a two-step stamp. So you have a solid flower image and then you have the details. And so um, you can put the color combinations together in a lot of different ways. But what I've found just with a little bit that I've been playing with, it's easier to stamp the um, detail first and then go back over and stamp uh, the solid image and you line them up by the middle. The middle um, section of each flower has, has a little piece that kind of coordinates. <clears throat> Robin. Yes. Is it easy to get all of, uh, Cynthia asks, is it easy to get all of the pieces out of the big die? It's very pretty, but. Out of that one. Well, I'm so glad you asked that because we're I'm actually cutting it out for you right now. Also, you're stressing Wendy out because her list is growing. <laughs> because why? Her list her, is growing. <laughs> everybody, everybody. That, <clears throat> that is the unfortunate um, side effect of, of this, right? Okay, so let me turn this this way. I wanted to cut this out for you if for exactly this reason, Cynthia, because that is always my concern too. So I'm using a piece of shimmery white that is four and a quarter by five and a half. Try not to shake the table too much. I'm just going to run it through twice. Whoops, so sorry. All right, so um, here is the die. And when I have a die like this, the first thing that I do is I just bang it on the table. So that's what I'm doing right now. Don't be alarmed. <laughs> because it just works. Um, you get almost everything out that way. So it's not, it's not pretty. You have to vacuum or whatever, but, and then, I use the little rolly tool. And it's it's pretty much out. There's just a few pieces left. So um I think it works pretty well. Just run it through twice. If you um Sometimes if you turn the die upside down, um, just like make the sandwich um, the same, but you put your die upside down for some, re for some reason, that sometimes works better with dies like this. So instead of running it through this way, you would just put it on the plate this way and run it through. But this one works pretty well. So I just wanted to show you an easy idea. Which I forgot my other piece of white. That's okay. Let's lift this up here. All right, so one of the new tools in the, uh, one of the three new tools are the um, miniature or the small blending brushes. And then this amazing little holder. So if you're like a storage solution queen, this is pretty fun. It holds nine brushes. Can you find the page number on that mm -hmm. for me, please? So I'm gonna just do a little coloring here and then I'll show you my finished piece. I'm gonna start with soft succulent and I'm just going to go over the greens
So um, I forgot my other piece of white. So I was um, intending to demonstrate this with this piece on top of a piece of white cut the same size. And you'll see what where I was going with this um, when you look at my sample, but I just want you to see how fun these little brushes are. They're very, they're a little bit easier to hold than the larger one, especially if you want to work on a smaller area. All right, so the, thank you. Here are the, um, don't miss it on page 67. Here's this new tool here. And the little mini small brushes. So you get three brushes for $11.50. And then the storage holder is $14. Okay, so I'm just putting in some flirty flamingo. And then we'll finish with some coral. You get it, right? Just decorate this really easily and make a nice, simple little card. So if I had white underneath there, um, you would have this beautiful little um, negative image like the stencil, right? So it makes it really easy. And so what I did on my sample was to use them together, but I just offset it a little bit. So I did the stencil on uh, over white. And then when I went to mount it, I just moved it a tiny little bit. So you'd see that little bit of white underneath there. So it makes a shadow. And then here's that beautiful little flower and the leaf. Very fun, uh, fun dye to play with. So I think you'll like that a lot. So this is just white over some of that beautiful paper. So you get that background. And then you can also cut the dye out of the paper and that's already colored. And then I just had to play with some of the designer series paper. I made a little background on there. And you know, added in some of the tags um, for this one. I will post all these samples on um, my blog at some point in the next couple of days. So you can look that. Yeah, this one's beautiful. I agree. I like, I, I mean, I like them all. I was, uh, it's very versatile even though it's just one little die. And these are beautiful. These, the, these are the little um, embellishments that kind of coordinate with this suite. They've got like a blue and a coral and a pink and they just, they sparkle and shine so beautifully. Very fun. Oh, that one doesn't Robin. <clears throat> Yes. Did you use the paint folder on the yellow gray card? Yes. Just it like uh it already looks like it's kind of painted. And then when I put that um embossing folder on there, it almost like it looks like <laughs> looks like it's actually painted, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's now bumped to the top of Wendy's list. <laughs> Sorry, Wendy. A, a two a two pager. <clears throat> This is a card we made at a, a play date a little while ago, but it's a, a nice kind of adds all the elements um, of that suite um, together. It's a little gift card holder. There's a pattern for that. All right, so glad to show you that made me so excited. Here's the ribbon, which I didn't put on any of the cards. Wow, I'm gonna have to get right on that and add that. Add that to the to-do list. Okay, so what do you think about that suite? Leave a little comment if you think about if you hadn't really thought about that one before.
All right, here, this is our only sample of this. Yes. <laughs> Do I need that? <laughs> I, I didn't know. Thank you. I thought you might like some more. You're doing fine, though. I almost started this um, event today without coffee. <laughs> um, if you don't know me well, that's not good. Um, but so Sue just handed me the coffee which is now cold, but it's okay. All right, so Sue made this amazing card. Look at this technique with rubber bands. Yes. Oh my goodness. How long ago did you do that? Which which week was that? Do you remember? Uh, just a couple ago. All right, so Sue Sheets is stamping with sushi, like the food, sushi. Yes. And um, she does a weekly video uh, more than one per week, but she does a, like a technique. Um, sometimes she does a fun fold. And um, this was a technique that she did for one week and you can make along with her. It's really fun, but look how cute this set is. This is one that is on my list, Wendy. Um, and now it's going to be a must have, but it's beautiful. This is lighting the way. And again, this is one you can get in the photopolymer or the um, cling. So I love Robin. Yes. There's a there's rubber bands with a question mark. I'm not really sure. I'm just gonna refer you to Sue's video, Stampin' with Sushi. Yeah, I, I don't think it's one of those. It's my club. And I don't but have, I thought I remembered you showing it. I might have. You wrap rubber bands around your your acrylic, acrylic blocks yeah. and then you ink them. You ink the rubber band on your block. As if they were a stamp. As if they were an image, mm -hmm. a stamped image, and then you use them like a stamp. You can make any pattern or design you want. Yep. Yes. Okay, we have some samples to share with, uh, I don't think anybody got this stamp set, but we all got the paper that coordinates with it for um, celebration. We have this fragrant, no. Do we want the paper too then? Favored flowers, paper for free. Mm -hmm. With uh, as a level one item. Lots of fun things with this. Oh my goodness. Look at that. That is a fun card using all those beautiful corals. Are these all your cards, Cheryl? Yep. Here. My name's Sue. Okay. Tell us about this one. That was a, a quilt pattern, which is, a, oh, uh, wouldn't you know you'd ask me. You put your pieces together and then you cut it up and then rearrange them mm -hmm. it's beautiful half score triangles there we go <laughs> I think. and here's one of the corner squash folds mm -hmm. with a beautiful little rectangle on the front I love this design so much and these are Sue's did you do like a series I did with a these? Step up. yeah oh I see yep adding a little bit more embellishments each time Hidden four patch. Could have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much of a quilter except playing with paper. <laughs> uh, here's the, the this one I made uh, yesterday with that paper. Oh, Z fold. Is there a place that people can find these design ideas? Is that on Sue's Sushi's? We can tell I, when I show my other uh, suite, I'll give you some sites. Okay. Or some people you could look at. Yeah, Cheryl can can um, show you or tell, talk to you about the hidden four patch. And then this was a template from a while ago as well. All right. So I know Nidia said I can't get behind this paper. I had kind of the same first oh, reaction to this Nidia. paper. Definitely. as well and so um i i feel you there's something dark about it 
not just the tone, but like there's, there's <laughs> but I found that when I use it in smaller quantities, I'm okay with it. So, but that's okay. You know what the good news is? If you don't like all the paper, then you don't have to get all the paper, right? If you don't like every stamp set, that's a relief because <laughs> you can't get them all. So um, it's nice to have some things that you can just cross off your list. All right, we're going to do our second make and take now with our um, paper. Let's just take a look at this. Favored flowers. It's very bold. It's, it's bold and dark. I think that's why initially I was kind of like, ooh, wow. What am I going to do with that? Um, maybe it looks a little... Um, I don't know. Overpowering yeah. Or something. It kind of it kind of reminds yeah. me of wallpaper yeah. that I don't want to have on the wall. <laughs> Old wallpaper. <A> bit. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say it kind of reminds me a little bit of like um Halloween, like a like a um steampunk Halloween type, I don't know. Horror movie. <laughs> yeah, like circus, like it's supposed to be pretty, but it's it's uh, sinister. So here are the colors in this paper. Very beautiful little combination. So let's put together this little template using this circus freak paper. Just kidding. Because <laughs> this is a fun template too. So I tried with the make and takes to um, create things that you could do over and over again with this pattern. And so this is a little faux quilt type design. And you need to have your um, ruler and pencil for this one. So again, if you just wanna watch and do it later, you can, but you're gonna make this little um, 16 patch on this square. So this is a four inch square. And so you need to mark one inch, two inch and three inch across the top and across the side. Robin, since you're recording this, will there be a, a replay or how can people watch it after the fact? Yes, I should have said that right away. Thank you. Um, so I'm recording this and then I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel. And then I will, um, everybody that has registered, I'll send you that link um, so that you can go right to it, but it will be, um, it will be there so that you can watch it again. All right, so here are the pieces. And here's how you make this. It's very easy. So I'm using these four here. So I'm going to do two of the flower sides and then two of the flip sides with the little patterns. And what you do is you start with, you start with, um, I'm going to start with, I'm going to finish my sentence and start with the flip sides. And you're going to just put a tiny bit of adhesive, whether it's liquid glue or, um, or double-sided adhesive. And you're going to put that right up against the edges of the piece in between your one inch and your two inch mark. So it's just going to be attached up there at the top for now, and that's going to help you get it straight. So this is loose and it's just attached right here. And then do the same thing with the one next to it. And that's going to go between the three and the one, two, the two inch and the three inch mark. Like that. And then you're going to take one of the flowers and you're just going to go over and under uh, one of the pieces and again just attach it right along the edge of the cardstock. And then with the last one you'll just do the opposite. So you'll weave, basically weave it. So if you went under on that piece, you're gonna go over 
like that. And again, you'll just attach it right at the top, right at the end. And so the pieces of designer series paper all touch, they're, they're close together. And that's how you get the, the corners that are the same size. Okay, so once you get those kind of straight and where you want them to be adjusted, then you just continue around and then you glue down the rest of these um, ends and you really don't have to worry about the middle. So those last two, you'll just want to like push them together um, because of how they're woven. They'll they'll want to have a little separation in them. Just make sure that they're close together like that. Easy, right? Could do that over and over again. So the great thing about this, anytime you make something that's like a quilt card is you, you can emboss it with an embossing folder. Uh, by the way, humans created these card kits. So if <laughs> some things are not exactly square, uh, that's why. So you can run this through an embossing folder and um, and and create you know a little more texture. You want to use the that one? Okay. So Cheryl's going to do that for us. Um, you could put any focal point on here. It looks great with any shape design. Um, you just want something that will. The black ink pad. So if you're going to use your square diagonally, just make sure you stamp it um, diagonally. Oh, that's sad. Wow. So this is where you'd want a photopolymer and you could totally redo this. I'll have to fix that. What about the other side? Well, then the stitching's not quite right. Oh. That's okay. So this piece here is, I believe, uh, one and a fourth by four. So it's just a nice, a nice place to kind of accent um, the colors in your little quilt pattern. Thank you. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, this is the new um, Kane 3D embossing folder. That's a fluffy quilt I want to sleep under. So that just gets mounted whatever direction you want. You could make this a square card, uh, make it a four and a quarter by four and a quarter. And that would be really cute too. And you could put your focal point, you know, in the middle if you wanted. That would be sweet. So I'm going to re-stamp that at a later date, but that goes here. And then your embellishments, you can stick on there. These are the black matte dots. So here's the, the finished one again. Yes, it's a great way to use up scraps. Yes. Uh, this was the one I had to really like rein myself in because I wanted to keep going and playing with this. So here is the Regency Park Sweet Paper, whatever it's called. That's it. Okay, great. Here is the country floral lane paper with the pretty flowers 
embossing folder. And then here is the dainty flowers paper with uh, this. This is a, like a 3D flower embossing folder. I don't know what the name of that is, but it's in the annual catalog. It's really fun. So for these two, instead of using a piece of cardstock for my four by four, I used another piece of designer series paper um, as the four by four. So you get like an extra little piece there. There's lots of options for this design as well. Oh, I hope you like this. I can't wait to see what you make um, with your papers that you have. At home, make this template and um, post it in our Really Robin stamps group. Okay, that was the painted Posey's embossing folder. Wendy Great. Says. Thank you. See? Brain collected. I love it. Let's always stamp together. That would be, that would help a lot. <laughs> okay, so we are going to uh, take a break from Miss Robin, and we are going to listen to Cheryl. She is going to um, tell us all about the Regency Park Suite, which is what is coming up next in our catalog. We are on page 30. Yes, yes, yes. We are on page 30 and 31. And so I am going to let Cheryl come. So Cheryl Sorensen, is her full name and she lives in Rochester, Illinois, near me, um, near Springfield. And she has been a demonstrator for since 2005. Since 2005, you do the math. <laughs> and um, she is going to tell you a little bit about her stamping story and then share the suite with you. Hello, everybody. Um, my stamping story was, uh, I was a school teacher for 35 years and um, one of my friend's daughters said she was going to have a stamping party. And I had no idea what that meant, but she says, you know, you and um, my mom need to come because I don't think anybody else is going to. And I have to have somebody come there. So we, her mother and I went, and she did have some other people who showed up. But uh, it just kind of blew my mind. I was always interested in some sort of um, artistic art type things. And I was getting somewhat close to retirement. And I thought, you know, that would be something good for me to do after I retire, help me meet people, get out. And actually, um, I was one of those crazy teachers who enjoyed making bulletin boards. So the cards were kind of like my own little miniature bulletin boards. And it has fulfilled my expectations and then some. So uh, I hope you have a good stamping story as well. In this set, we are looking at, or this suite, on pages 30 and 31 in the catalog. And I'll tell you a sad story, which we all have these days. The second um, bundle in this group, I did not order it in the beginning. And so on the pre-order. And then when I finally decided that this is the one I was going to uh, show you, I didn't order soon enough, I guess, and it's coming today. So I'm not going to show you much with that, but that's all right. I think I have enough to share with you anyway. The If you take a look at the papers that come with this suite, it's really, they're some of my favorites, but I uh, gravitate toward blues anyway. And these are just beautiful. So I want to show you this, the print sides of all of these 
papers and they are six by six papers. And if you notice in the catalog, there are 48 of them. So you get a lot of them. And being the six by six, at times I thought that wasn't a good measurement, but it really is. It's very handy for your card fronts and for making things. So I'm gonna show these here. And then on the other side, you might say, well, some people might say, you know, I really am not too impressed with all those flowers and all of that, but that's okay. The other side, more general neutral types of designs that you can use to, and they definitely coordinate. And I've got another way to show those here. And the cardstock that goes with them is the petal pink, which we keep keeps coming through almost all of these uh, papers this round. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It ha it hasn't been part of the sets mm -hmm. very much. And then sweet sorbet, which is one of the in colors this year. Mango melody, shaded spruce balmy blue night of navy so that's just they just go so well together and that's one of the best selling points for stampin up that it coordinates the colors match one time somebody told me a story that if you want to really check that out and if you have those of you who are new uh, demos if you were to decide you wanted to make a card let's say in red and you went to some of the other craft places where you can get cardstock and ink and things like that, you would have a very difficult time matching the inks and the cards and the ribbons, and it all be the same red. But with Stampin' Up, if it says it's real red, all of the items that have real red on them are going to go together. Or if it's Sweet Sorbet, which is kind of the red in this set. Another interesting thing for this set is the ribbon, and I have a little sample here, but I'll try to show it a little bit closer. And it's a navy, and it has dark, so the edges are dark, and the, in the middle is somewhat sheer, not exactly, it's not exactly sheer. Um, somebody's wanted to be admitted. Okay. Then there are also these, what they call milky dots. And I'll show that. Mm -hmm. Milky dots. And when you look at them, they go with the colors of the paper and they just have a milky hint to them. Now, one of the interesting things about the first bundle in this set, if you look at it, it is called or oh, the first one right up here on the top of the page. We want that one right there. We're going to look at it. Petal Park Bundle. And I told you my sad story about the Sentimental Park Bundle, but that's just the way it is. And if you turn the page, you can see those two bundles shown to you in more detail. The Petal Park Bundle, what's nice about it is it has a punch. And I know some of my customers really like punches and they come in very handy. You can grab that, not have to use your machine. So it, it some gravitate towards punches, some towards the, the dies. And then looking at the other set, if you just will look at it, even though it's, I don't have it to show you very much of, it has more greetings and various, flower ways that you can punch with your right with your punch and you can see that because they're shadowed in white the ones that are shadowed in white were going are, are either cut with dies or with punches now earlier somebody asked can you cut use a punch or the dies with the designer series paper well, when I first got this paper, I thought, I'm not sure about that because it doesn't look like it's going to. But the more I played with it, I found there were two pieces, this one and this one that you can actually use the punch with because the flowers are separated enough 
and you might not get them exactly close. They're not perfect, perfect like you might want, but they can be cut with the punch. And I Cheryl, did I'm sorry, can I interrupt you for just one second? Polly, did you have a question? I see that your hand is raised and you're on mute. Oh, let me see. Excuse me. <laughs> Did we have a question? Um, Polly has a question and she's sure. talking and I need to unmute her. Um, which I need to unmute her, I guess. <laughs> I don't know why it's that's right. Can you do that, Robin? Sure. She's coming. Sorry, Polly. One second. Oh, actually, I'm not able to, Robin. Okay. I'm trying. We'll keep going and we'll get to this question okay. here. Um, I used the punch and cut out these images from this paper. And you can, I think you can see that, that those have been cut. And as I mentioned, the other one you can do that with is this pattern. Now you have to you have to play around a little bit, but the punch definitely does work with these two patterns. Um, this one I did put it on a brick wall. Thought it kind of looked like a, a vine going up a brick wall, and used our brick embossing folder, and did just take a sponge and go over it or a, the uh, brushes just a little bit to highlight those bricks. Um, some other cards that I have put together using this paper as well as the stamps. I found that the stamps that have, I'll show you on, in the case here, the outline and then the fill-in, you can use them separately or you can put them together. And I did find that for me, if I used a darker outline, stamped that image, then filled it in with the solid image, possibly in a little bit lighter color, it was very simple to line them up. And these are exactly in the pattern of why the punch works. So you just have to get your punch in that same angle. The uh, leaves, there's only one leaf on here, but you can do the same thing with having solids, outline and solid with a single leaf. And then this you can stamp. And I think I have a pet, a pet one here. This one, you stamp your leaves and then you have the open spaces that you can fill with your punched flowers. Now this is a, for uh, new stampers. If you sometimes, I always want to think, I'd like to have a card that's a little different than just opening a, the regular style card. This one is a very simple one. I don't have any greeting in there yet because I will write my message in there it's a, as a thank you card. I just cut off one and a quarter inches from the front of the card and then use some designer paper to fill that spot using then a focal point to kind of uh, put that card all together and to hold it flat. And that's just a simple thing you can do is cut off a little part of your front. This one is similar in that style, only it has a backwards flap. And here I did use the uh, flowers, the stamped images, stamp them in, in this case, the navy worked as a good base and then adding in the colors that were found in some of the papers. And this is a flap that's on a strip that just goes underneath, stick a little tab under there, and then it closes your card. And here's a little bit of that ribbon that I showed you earlier. I think I did mention this one. Here's another idea that what you can do is take, and this is your would be your regular base card, and you just fold it back halfway to create a different opening for your card. And you can add some designer paper, 
You could stamp that part. You could leave it plain. That's your choice. I mentioned that I would give you some ideas for uh, where you could find some of these card uh, designs. I do a lot by going just to Pinterest. And if I have a name for a card design, I put that name in and it's amazing what you can find. And then you can also find videos that'll show you exactly how to do it. This one I did get from a demonstrator over in uh, central Illinois, and it's called a spanner card. And it's your basic card. And I'll show you how it works. This piece here holds the front together and you open it up to have different sayings. So here I have just for you, have a perfect birthday. You are a real blessing to everyone around you. And this is just a, the basic card cut only here on each side on the front, one and a quarter inches. And then use your DSP to, to decorate and add a piece across here to hold these flaps together. And that piece can also, I didn't get one made, but you can also use acetate and make a strip with acetate. And when you do that, you don't, it's kind of uh, like you don't even see it. And you wonder how that's being held together when you open your card. That's a spanner card. So if you're interested in how to do that, look up spanner cards. Here's one, just a basic, simple design. This would be a real good one for uh, reproducing in lots of different papers. And the basic idea here is that you cut your designer paper in three by four, which is a good way to use your paper because you get the most out of it and you don't have scrap left over if you're making, um, especially for like classes, if you happen to do that, or you have to happen to send out kits, you get the most out of your paper. Then this little piece here, the mat, is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And then just add some decoration across the middle of the card. And that one, I just used the, some of the flower designs on the inside and a little tiny scrap of paper that happened to be uh, on the desk and just put it in there. Uh, Cheryl, can, can I interrupt for one second? And I just, I want to give Polly an opportunity to ask her question. Oh, yes. Okay. I wondered okay. if we got to Polly. I did the hand, I did the hand accidentally. <laughs> and then oh. I couldn't figure out how to get it off. So I'm good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry, Cheryl. Go ahead. Thank you. Though. Thank you, though. All right. <laughs> um, okay. And this one as a simple way to use some scraps. If you get done making some projects and you have some half inch strips, quarter inch strips, three quarter inch strips left over and you, after you've cut some cards, make a piece that goes down the center or off to the side as I did here and just diagonally put strips on there. And it creates an interesting background. I also used, I don't know if it'll show, there we go, the uh, cane embossing folder. And that goes with this suite as well. And it really makes a nice uh, image on your embossing. And these are some of the flowers that I stamped in navy and then used the balmy blue to fill them in. Couple more here. I think they might be from your missing set. The missing dies. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, this one comes for, is a sample that uses one of the missing dies that from the ones that I didn't get. It'll be at my porch when I get home. Um, <laughs> <laughs> be very helpful then. But here's again the cane embossing folder. Really shows with this blue. I didn't realize it would do that that well. And then here with your where you put your greeting, it has little flowers that are all part of the die. And you can see that in the picture. If you take a look at that. And then in that die as well are some of the little cutouts that you can add to that. That's really pretty. And this was one of Robin's 
play dates. And it was a template that she put where you have a basic piece in the middle and two smaller pieces on the side, then you can add your greeting. So don't forget to watch Robin's play dates. You'll learn lots of good ideas. Here's one that um, is a has what's called a belly band. And I use some of the flowers from the punch, using the punch and the leaves to make this card using some, whoops, I've got it upside down. Sorry about that. Uh, that opens up on the inside. And you'll see here, it's attached to a base and you can just have some fun with different shapes on cards. And these were um, three and a half, I believe, or three and three fourths squares that are just turned on there on the diamond side and then have your belly band to hold it shut because it does, they don't wanna stay down too well by themselves. I think we have covered everything in this suite. Anybody have any questions about it? About the play date, will play date 80 be posted soon? <laughs> what was that? Uh, yes. <laughs> the play date's what? 80. <laughs> oh, gosh. And don't forget that the embossing folders and punches are a real good addition to your um, supplies to use on all kinds of cards, even if you don't use them with this, this paper or with this set. Cheryl, will your card samples be online too? Well, if uh, Robin can help me figure that out, sure. Yes. <laughs> yep. We'll, uh, we'll figure that out and we'll put them, we'll, we'll put them all together. That's going to be quite a, we have a lot of card samples on we this do, table. We it's do. It's going to be quite a, uh, <laughs> a job. <laughs> All right, Cheryl, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, everybody clap for Cheryl. I'm, I, I think Cheryl needs to start making some videos. What do you think? I think she does. <laughs> I, I think her. so. She's a natural. All right, I am going to remove the spotlight from my table and I am going to spotlight our friend and fellow demonstrator, Tamara. And I'm gonna let her introduce herself and then I'm gonna show you her hands. Tamara is a new-ish demonstrator to the <laughs> Butterfly Friends and I'm gonna let you let her tell you her story. Um, you even have to, um, let's can you see. hear me now? Yes. Thank okay. you. There we go. Sorry. I'm having technical difficulties. My computer just decided to start shut down on me. Well, that's <laughs> something. Okay. <laughs> I'm Tamara Moore. I'm in Fairbanks, Alaska, and, um, I have been a crafter forever. I craft with, with all kinds of stuff. And my favorite medium has always been paper. I love to play with paper. So uh, I was making journals for several years and um, I stumbled across Stampin' Up! videos when I was looking for something and um, I stumbled across Robin's videos and a few others. So I was watching those videos and I thought, hmm, um, I saw something on the Sweet as a Peach stamp set. So I thought, well, I'm going to go ahead and try that. And I decided to go ahead with Robin. I just liked her personality in the videos I was watching. So I went ahead and ordered from her the sweet as a peach. And as soon as I stamped that set, I was sold. As soon as I put that ink to the stamp to paper, I, I was amazed by the quality and, and how the image turned out. So I started playing with that. And very quickly, I knew <laughs> that this was going to be um, something I was going to be purchasing all the time. So I decided fairly quickly to sign up. Uh, so I've been a demonstrator for just over a year. I believe it was November of 2021 20, that I signed up. So um, yeah, so I've been having a lot of fun with that and um, I still just can't get enough of it. So super excited. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and flip my phone around and show you what I'm going to work on. So give me a second here. 
Okay, so I'm going to show you the Around the Bend bundle. Um, it's a stamp, stamp and die set. And um, these are the dies, and I'll show you that paper here in a minute, and then the stamps. And they're, uh, they're the photopolymer, which are perfect for the set. Um, and so all the dies can cut out these shapes. The rounded um, edges that I have here is this die here and it has a stitched edge and I just tried it in two different orientations to see what what would cut out and then you have this beautiful leaf um, some floral images some fun hearts the leaves and some other like branchy leaf type things so um, it does not come with a paper it's just a stamp and die bundle but I did make some samples and then we'll make uh, we'll make a quick card together so one, so I, I had a lot of fun with the stamps to start with. So I made this card with just the stamps and then I put some rhinestones and the only stamp I'm using is this one right here. And I thought it came out with a really fun, like it, it, it looks celebration to me, a really fun pattern. And then the, I'm just so happy for you, uh, polymer stamp is designed to be straight but the nice thing about photopolymer is if you have a long straight sentiment like that you can get it on your block and kind of curve it the direction that you want it to go so that's what I did to kind of try to follow the flow of the stamp I just curved that, that stamp and then stamped with it um, my next sample I had a really a, a lot of fun with is this one here I used only the in colors and I made a pattern I made a pattern with this stamp right here and I just alternated. I went around each corner with one color and then cleaned it off and then went around each corner again. I used some of that fun ribbon behind the sentiment and this square, it was a square. I just cut two different squares, two different sizes and I used my favorite punch and I used this angle to cut the angles off each square. Um, and then I used, for the background, I use this um, bubble background, a second generation stamping, so it wasn't as bright. And that's with Tahitian Tide. So this is all um, using only the new ink colors. And then the sentiment is from here as well. So I thought that turned out really fun. I'm probably going to make more of them for some birthday cards. I love this how this card turned out. Um, the next one, I've been kind of into some little cards. So this is a three by three card. And I think they're just great. Like I, I like to bake and, and give little gifts. So I think little three by three cards just to, to put in, throw in a little gift or a, if you're making a whole bunch of baked goods or great um, little thing to have. And so what I used here is I use the, um, the die that can cut that rounded edge in this set to cut some of the DSP from the, the free, um, I never can remember the name of that paper. The um, celebration. The celebration one. Yeah, the celebration with the pretty flowers. <laughs> uh, dainty, dainty flowers is what it's called. So um, I just used the back of that, and I cut out some of these these here that are in there, and glued them on there. A little bit of white. Um, thread that we have and then I heat embossed this in gold and this is the same stamp set stamp from the set you are a blessing so I just heat embossed that on there and then I just stamped the inside with the flower and these leaves here and I just think that's just a cute little card or maybe just a little note of encouragement for somebody and put some other um, sentiments on there um, the next one I was playing I'm playing with this and there's probably a lot of things you can do but um, I, I made this card because I really wanted to play with this set and I kind of um, kind of really went all out on it and what I did is I used this die that cuts this leaf and I just cut out the corner of this card um, I heat I use the Versamark on here on the leaves and heat emboss this with gold and then I embossed um, the paper 
with the sprig, twigs and sprigs embossing folder. And then I rubbed my ink pad, that inking technique across the top. And this is uh, moss, Mossy Meadow mm -hmm. Old Olive. I just did it over the top. And then for the sentiment, I dipped the edges in the Versamark ink and then got the gold on there and heat embossed that and um, then stamped the sentiment from the set. Just wanted to say thanks and pop that up. And I thought this edge was a little harsh. So I put, I have some, um, we, I don't think we carry it anymore. I think that's that um, evening evergreen or whatever on the edge here, just to soften that up a little bit. And then I just stamped the inside corner here with this beautiful, leaf corner stamp and then my last design and I'm going to show you how to do uh, make this is this one here and this is not my design I cased it this was the first one I made so in the catalog and that's one of the great things about this catalog is you can uh, if you like a design on there you can copy it or just tweak it a little bit to make it your own but I love the layering of this here so I figured out how I wanted it and I have um, cut my different pieces. So this is three different layers and this is using that floral paper again. So um, what I'm gonna do is pull out my card here and I'll give you the measurements of what I come up with. But you can definitely change it all by yourself here, what, what sizes. So the Dainty Flowers DSP is what I'm going to use, and I'm going to actually change the orientation of the card. This is, um, this piece here is five and a half by two and a quarter, or I mean two and a half, five and a half by two and a half. This piece here is five and a half by two and three quarters, and then this piece here is five and a half by two and a quarter. And I just kind of wanted to quickly show you um, I have everything else punched out for the card, but except for the um, the borders. So um, to line them up, because they're two different dies, you're going to have this die here that cuts one border, and then this die here that cuts the other border. So the first border I cut is the white one. And I just kind of eyeballed it. So here, I just kind of eyeballed it with this last loop that's on the end here for the edge of the paper, kind of centered the edge of my paper in there and then um, just laid that on there and then cut it. Where's my other? Once I find my other piece. <laughs> ah. Oh, it's, it blended in with my table. Okay. And for this one, I'm not really caring if it's perfectly straight or um, we will be able to get it to match. I'm just gonna cut that through. So now we have this really pretty edge. So how I got um, this next die to match the curve, and it looks pretty if it doesn't as well. Um, I just kind of put my paper on and kind of sort of matched the curve as best I could with this, with the curve that is on this paper. and then run that through. Stagger my plates. <laughs> there we go. And the nice thing about these dies is they do fit, um, I believe all of them fit in the mini, let me see. The leafy die may not. I haven't tried it in the mini. Okay. So here's that. 
And these are pretty easy to get out, um, to get all of these pieces out. Put that off to the side. I would recommend for um, stamping this border that we're gonna stamp on this white piece here to use your Stamparatus, which I just got in a couple weeks ago. So I'm really excited about it and I love it. Okay, that looks good. Okay, that's all cleaned up. So we've got all of our pieces cut. So the next thing is we're gonna go ahead and stamp um, that border. So what I did, is I lined this up in here. The easiest thing that I have found so far to be able to stamp with this stamp set is to just line it up where you want it on here. So that it matches the curves. There we go. For me, I rock, I rock them when they're thin like this and I get ink everywhere. So this is the best the best thing for me to be able to stamp um, that on there where I want it. I'm gonna use crushed curry because that's one of the colors in the paper pack. Let's ink up your, your stamp. And I, I'm happy usually with the first stamp image on this one, so. We're just gonna do it once. Okay, so all of our pieces are ready to be able to put this card together. So to, to assemble the card, it's very, very simple. The first piece you're gonna attach is your, your um, designer series paper. You're gonna attach that towards the bottom edge. And I know these are sideways, but I thought we would try a different orientation on the same design. Okay, the next piece you're gonna attach is your white piece. And attach that to the top. And then your colored piece of DSP. This is um, Fresh Freesia. And then attach that to the top as well. And I didn't measure this out. I'm fine with this, but you can also, um, sometimes with the measurements, I don't get it lined up just right. And so you can just shave a little bit off the top. But I think that turned out really cute. Okay, so then I thought I, we would try a different orientation. And these cute little flowers here, they go to, together really quick. So I've got the leaves, I've got the centerpiece, and I'm just gonna use those two uh, flowers. Use one of these little leaves here. So now we just need to assemble the flowers. And that little round circle um, goes right in the center there. I'm going to attach the leaves on all the other flowers. And I'm using some reverse tweezers. I'm Stampin' Up! has a set as well that you can actually find online that I have coming because I um, love the reverse tweezers, but I actually hurt myself with these ones that I have because they're very sharp. So <laughs> I want the other ones. Okay, 
I'm not going to stamp a sentiment in here. Well, yes, I will. So I'm going to stamp a thank you sentiment, and I'm going to go ahead and use the old olive that's within the the color here. And this um, piece here I got from our stamp. I, I think we still have or our punch. I think we still have this. I love this punch. This is a handy punch when you just need a quick sentiment um, piece to go on your card. So we'll go ahead and attach that. And I'm doing all mine flat because I do mail a lot of cards. So I want to make sure that um, it'll go through just fine. So now it's just decorating and attaching um, your flowers. And a simple pretty card and it's just a different orientation than the one that I cased from the catalog. Mm -hmm. Very good. Nice. Okay, I hope you guys um, enjoyed the samples and it's fun just to get get your stamps out and just start playing with them and seeing what you can come up with. Tamara, that was amazing. amazing. Yes, it was. I have to stop this right now and go order that bundle, which I didn't order. <laughs> Why did I not order that? You know, I love the challenge because it really got me thinking outside the box and got me really playing with the stamp set. And that made me realize I need to play more. <laughs> yes. Yes, you do. You need to play more. I put in the chat, uh, Tamara's YouTube channel. It's called More Stamping with Tamara. Um, I didn't have the link because um, I was afraid to leave the Zoom to um, do that link. But um, Tamara has started a YouTube channel and um, it's amazing. So if you want to see more of Tamara more, then please <laughs> go visit her um, visit her YouTube channel. Thank you so much. That was mm -hmm. great. Literally on my list now. I was going to order it immediately. All right, um, we have Sue coming up next. She's gonna show us a suite, but before I pass by this cute on the farm um, uh, stamp set that's on the same page as Around the Bend, um, I'm going to show some more samples here to get your creative juices flowing. Look at this lovely little scene here. So much fun. I'm telling you, this paper is something else. The, the next three or the sequential. Oh yeah. Again. So here, um, Sue likes to do a um, a step it up series where she um, makes a simple card and then shows two different ways to um, turn it into a more advanced card by stepping up different aspects of the card. That's so much fun. Who made this? I did. Cheryl. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Oh, come on. That's perfection. I just cut out of the paper. I just, I don't have the stamp set. And I went on Pinterest and looked for barn cards and got several patterns and then just adapted one. Oh my gosh. Wow. I can't wait to see that. Wow. Thing. This is a like reversed matchbook card pop up card oh my goodness this is amazing who's ready to go stamp right now yeah. <laughs> i am and that i made this one yesterday so another one of those little cards so much fun on that celebration paper and on the farm okay we i realize it's already noon we're going to go over just a tiny bit um but again this is recorded so if you have to leave you can catch the rest of this. Um, this is my my first favorite item in this book. I'm on page 39, um, the conversation bubbles. These are very fun and just really timeless. Um, it's a nice little collection to add 
to your um, stash. You probably don't have anything like it. You've got all these beautiful dyes and the images, and you can do all kinds of things with them. This is a neat little die right here, just kind of cut straight across so you can make this big, um, like bottom of a bubble, right? So um, I'm actually gonna give this to my husband for Valentine's Day. Just a cute little kitty card. So that's conversation bubbles. And next we are gonna introduce Sue Sheets. Stampin' with Sushi. She's going to show us this great suite of products here on page 42 and 43. Tell us your stampin' story, Sue. So how do I switch it to me? Oh, I'll do it. No, no. it's oh, to your face. Well, I don't have to show my face. <laughs> It's so that's what that's what we're seeing right there. So yeah, I was gonna show my face. Okay. There we go. Let's do that. Okay. Go ahead. So hi, I'm Sue Sheets, and if you wonder where the name Stampin' with Sushi came from, if you say Sue Sheets really, really fast, it comes out like sushi. So <laughs> I, um, I started it, um, I actually started it when I was still teaching. I'm a retired teacher. I taught for 34 years, and um, I was known as Sushi uh, in the school that I taught at. So I picked the Delicate Desert, oh no, Stampin' Up. I've been with Stampin' Up for 19 years. In April, it'll be 20. Um, and um, I have loved every single minute. I can't say I ever wished I wasn't doing this. Um, and let's see, I'm, I'm gonna tell you my joining story in a bit when I show you one of my samples. So uh, I'll get started on my suite. Thank you, Robin. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So uh, these are the designer papers. And I think the designer paper is kind of what drew me to the suite because I have always liked like the regals, the fall colors. Um, I just thought the colors in this suite were really um stunning and I like to make my homework because Robin you know she's a pretty strict teacher she requires the homework from us and so um, what I've done is I've taken each one of the designs and then next to it is the reverse size side so the they're very um, plain and and subtle and then they do encompass most of the color families because um, this is a regal this is a subtle, this is a um, neutral, this is an in color and another subtle and another in color. Um, and then the really um, incredible part of the things that are in the suite is this dry brushed metallic paper. You get um, two sheets of two colors and um, they're 12 by 12. And we actually got a pack at our Stampin' event. And then when I ordered the suite, I got another pack. So I'm very anxious to use them all up. Um, and I love designer paper. You'll find out when I show you some of my samples, I use it as much as I can. So these are the, um, what is involved in the stamp set. So I've stamped the images and, and um, there are no, no, there are. Um, I actually hand cut these. Why did I? <laughs> um, so the the flower images are what they call the distinctive stamp because um, you just stamp it once, but it has all different layers of color on it. And so there is a huge flower and then a smaller flower and a die to cut them both out. Um, and then there are these two like strips 
they kind of remind me of things you might find on a Navajo rug or something, but any of these street, two strips of design. And then three sayings. Um, you are what, I guess you can't really see that. You are what sunshine feels like. Let the fun begin and sending warm rays your way. <clears throat> and those are fun sayings. Um, and then the dyes, that, that is another part of this that's amazing. So there are three dyes that kind of go together, or two, I guess. Um, one is this die, and it has, right here, it has stitching around it and little notches on the end. And then um, this is the larger die that has zigzaggy lines and dots and notches that go out. And if you put them together, then you get this little frame right here. Um, so it's like three, three different uses out of these two dies. Then there is this, this really cute, um, I don't know what, what you would call it, shape. <laughs> um, and I used, when I made my sample here, I, I cut the shape in half because it was too big to go on my, this is a half of a, a half of a piece of paper that your cardstock comes in. Then this little one, um, I should have brought the dies with me because you can tell looking at the back of a die if it's gonna cut out an image all the way or just cut out it partially. And so I don't know if you can see the, the impression around the side of this, that's the shape of the die. But when you run it through your machine, it just cuts out these shapes in the middle. So it's a really uh, cool thing to put on a background. Like I could have put it up here and here and had this, this lovely little shape at the bottom. And then um, we've got this cactus-like plant and uh, the insides of it come out. And so I cut it out of another color and then took the insides and placed them in the middle. And I thought that was a nice look. And then we have another strip here that's actually a die. So you have three strips you can use um, as borders. In addition, then you've got some uh, gold faceted sequence and they're self-adhesive. This one is kind of a teardrop shape. And then two that are different sizes of sequence. I'm not holding this right, am I, Robin? And then you have a little moon, moon shape. And then you have this lovely pale papaya faux velvet ribbon. And I wasn't sure how it would tie. Um, you know, it's a little bulky, but it, it tied pretty well, I thought. So anyway, that's my homework, and that gives you a really full picture of everything that's involved in the bundle and the suite. So now I'll sh I want to show you some samples. So the first one, I'm going to tell you my stamping story. So I went to my first workshop probably 21 years ago, and Robin was the demonstrator running the workshop, and I went with my 12-year younger sister. And I had been stamping for a long time. Our mother was very crafty and encouraged us to be too. But I'd always bought like single stamps at like um, Hobby Lobby and places like that, and then tried to combine them in a pleasing way and didn't always like my result. So at this workshop, this is the actual card that we made and when I was done, I was thrilled, absolutely thrilled, because my card looked just like Robin's. And I've never had that kind of pleasing um, situation with stamping before. Um, I, showed, I showed this, and Robin noticed it the other day. Now, she's been stamping, she said, what, 23, 20, 24 years? 24 life. years. She knows the name of this stamp set. It was my favorite stamp set at the time. I used the heck out of it. It, it, it I, I stamped with it 21 years ago. It's called Sketch It. So she told me Sketch It, and I thought she meant that I needed to make a sketch <laughs> of this design of the card. And then she told me that that really was the name. 
Um, and look at the inside. Even back then, she was doing really cute insides. So I did. I thought, well, I'm just going to sketch it. So I took her sketch and I took my uh, suite and I took some of the designer paper and on the background, because I didn't have cute little ladybugs like that, um, it says, let the fun begin. And then I stamped one of the, the small flower and then I did the, the large flower and I actually with a blending brush, I blended several different colors on here. You really can't. Yeah, let's hold it up a little bit. Like, that's gorgeous. Yeah, you really can't see, but my, I think my ink pad for my um, Cajun craze was pretty low on ink. But anyway, with the multiple colors, I thought that turned out pretty good. And then I stamped the saying on the backside of some of the designer paper and used the sequences here and then did my velvet ribbon, and this was my knot. Um, and then on the inside, I did the big flower. And I thought um, I would write my message down here. So this was Robin's sketch it, and this is mine 21 years later. I can't believe you still have that card. <laughs> I do. I'm I, amazed. I, I do. I I thought it was a great, oh, and, and this is a tool that we don't have anymore, but uh, it's a crimper. I think um, we should have put in the sandbox. We want a paper crimper back because mm -hmm. that was the greatest thing oh, ever. It really right? was. It was so, fun. so like therapeutic to use a paper crimper. Yeah, except at one of my very first workshops, um, one of the ladies that came brought her daughter who was five who decided <laughs> she thought she should crimp her hair and her blouse. Oh, okay. <laughs> and the mother said nothing. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. I had somebody put dazzling diamonds uh, glitter on their um, eye, like right under their eyebrows <laughs> at a workshop. So, you know, stuff so, happens. Yes, what, yes. what happens at a stamp and party that's right. yeah. stays there. Except unless you mention it on Facebook Live. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so my, um, so I do have, do a Facebook Live every week. I started it during COVID and um, because I wanted my customers to have a way that they could still stamp and that possibly then they would use some of their own stuff because they would tell me that they ordered things and that when they sent in their next order, the this first order was still in the bag. And so I on Tuesday, I do a video and tell people what the cutting instructions are for the card of the week. And on Friday, um, and both of these are at 1030. Um, I tell them how to put the card together. So this month I've been featuring slimline cards because I realized they're a thing and I really haven't done much with them. And so my first week was just your basic. So we used designer paper and then had like a little focal point. And this is what I did on the inside um, because I just thought these plants were so awesome. Um, and then I showed them how to make an envelope that match. Now Stampin' Up! sells envelopes that fit the slimline cards, and they're very nice, and they work, would work with this. But I just thought it was fun to make one out of matching designer paper. Um, and the thing about it is, if you are a paper hoarder like I am, it's a great way. It uses 8 by 11 of a designer paper. So anyway, this was the first one that I did. And then this is this week's. So this was your basic, this is called a front flap slimline. So you fold your card in half and then you cut a half inch off of each side of the front fold. And then when you open it up, you've got your sides and your inside. And um, so I had fun using the inside of the um, frame. And then this is some of that um, paper, that fancy paper and, um, and the designer paper. And I even used the designer paper on the inside because it's um, light enough I could write my message on there. And then of course, another matching envelope. Now the third one I wanna show you is I'm a quilter too. 
And um, this was this is a card with a quilt design. Doesn't it look complicated? It looks like you're going to have to cut like half inch by half inch squares, and then these rectangles, and then these squares. Um, but it's so easy. I thought I would share with you how easy it is. Um, anyway, that's my, I think it's four by four. Yeah, four by four card. And it will fit in an envelope. So um, I, I didn't think you needed to know how to paste squares on a, on a piece of cardstock. But what you need for supplies are two one inch squares of four different designs and then one one inch square of a fifth design. So these are uh, the papers from the suite. And then you need a paper cutter. And I, I had one of those little mini ones and I took it to a assisted living facility where I stamped with the ladies. And one of the ladies pretty much commandeered it as hers. So I don't have the Stampin' Up! one anymore. <laughs> but what you do, this is a three inch square with, and these are all one inch squares. So you're going to take your three inch square and you're going to cut it in half at one and a half inches. And you'll end up, I need to cut it again. I like our, our uh, cutter a lot better, but it was so bulky. I didn't know how it would work on the video. There, so you have two pieces that look like this. And then you take each one of those and you cut that in half at one and a half inches. And then you can have all kinds of fun figuring out how you want to organize these because um, you can rotate this square each time. And then you've got a different one here. I don't know if I'm rotating this right. I, I usually have to do this on my own. Like that, you can make it so that all your little squares meet in the middle. You can make it so you've, you're you alternating these squares. It's kind of what a quilter does when they're putting piecing a quilt together. But anyway, then, um, and what I did was I made my rectangles, these rectangles match up. No, these are in the corner. Like that, and then that, and that. But anyway, it's just a fun way to use up your scraps and nowhere near as difficult as it looks when you look at the card. That's that's how that this one was done, I remember now. It's okay. That the, the bold print you can't see all of yeah. the cuts. Mm -hmm. Well, and and that's the other neat thing about this too, because it's going to look, well, this combination looks a mm -hmm. lot different from this combination. Yeah. And it all depends on what paper you're using. There's also, an, also another technique the lady um, showed us with, it's all just one quarter inch strips in a line and then you cut them in a certain way and then you have a totally different quilt design. But anyway, it's a fun way to use up your scraps and then, um, you know, make a fun little quilt card. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those colors are pretty. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Cheryl. I didn't get this sweet either, Sue. Oh, you didn't? I didn't. Um, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> Well, this, the reason I got it was how you, the reason you said you got your other suite, because 
it was available for us and it <laughs> and it was you know early one number get it all get it all and get it before anybody else <laughs> all right you guys you are so patient um i'm sorry we're running over our two hours it was hard to to judge um the time but i just i do have more samples to show you so i want to um continue with that and again um i there will be i'm going to upload this to youtube this um video that we are doing together so you will um be able to watch this again or at least the parts that you missed so this is um i think it's a the page before mine 41 on page 41 little bundle with this fun punch are these yours cheryl yes yes that one i stamped the background made my own DSP, yeah you did basically. it's gorgeous i love this fold Very cute. I love how that tucks in there. That was a surprise. That's because really because I didn't glue it all the way. Yeah, the edge. <laughs> that's really nice. Really nice. Excellent. All right. So that is the bundle called Lucky Clover. That was page 41. And we are coming up on page 40. Five. I always get the greeting sets. Um, I just love the words. And so I wanted to just give you um, some ideas for this stamp set right here called Kind and Sincere. And there's a lot of different ways you can put these um, greetings together with between the, the large words and the small words. So um, I'll take a picture of this and post this um, on the blog post where we have all these things. And so you can get some ideas of how to put those words together if you need them. So it's a fun, a fun addition to your greeting collection. And of course, this paper right here I haven't even used. I want to um, make some little um, little purses with this animal print paper. And let's go to page forty nine. We have some. Look, I use the same paper with all these samples I made. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I see my brain just repeats itself. This is a great bundle. You've seen me use this if you've watched my videos. So we've got the um, added feature of a hybrid embossing folder, um, which I show you how to um, use on these videos. But look how cute that little um, conversation bubble is right there. See the limes? Limes talking. So you didn't know that. Limes talk. <laughs> <clears throat> this is on my hot list too. This is a, a really unique stamp set. Um, my kids will be so excited for me to send them some taco cards. So this is on my wish list um, as well. We have this sweet rain or shine. <laughs> and um this one is one that I haven't played with yet but exciting is that it's going to coordinate with the next paper pumpkin kit these are specialty um designer series papers because the images are um embossed and shiny I don't know if you can see that but we've got some some rain and we've got sun so it, that's why it's called rain or shine and we've got these cute little animals that work with the dyes. There's some more rain and and then these beautiful colors on the on the back side. Just really gorgeous. Robin, did you know if people go to the paper pumpkin site, they can submit their name and three friends' names and so they can get that whole suite for free oh right now until yeah i don't know the end date and that's because it coordinates with with this mm -hmm. little promotion yeah. 25th, so fifth, i think the 25th, 25th i think is the end date okay I so think. apparently you can go to the paper pumpkin site and you can submit your name and some friends mm -hmm. and for an opportunity to win this suite um, because it coordinates with the next paper pumpkin kit 
and then these add-on dies. So definitely look at that information uh, if you like these little critters, because it's all about the little critters next month. Here's the fun little paper um, flower embellishments that coordinate with that suite. And I do have a sample of this, but I'm going to show you in a minute when we do our next make and tape. All right, we have some bunny cards here with our Easter bunny bundle with the punch. Oh, that's so cute. Wow, you really colored that fur. Amazing. It looks great. Did it with a blender pen and just the ink pad. Okay, blender pen and ink pad. And little carrots ready to be eaten. Oh. So cute. Nice job, Cheryl. Thank you. Very cute. What is this? It will actually be an easel. Okay. Right there. Oh my gosh, how cute. Oh, that's really sweet. Boy, I hope we're keeping track of how many fun folds we have to uh, focus <laughs> up on here in the next few days. All right, we've got this um, beautiful Dainty Delight bundle that. Uh, coordinates with the celebration paper. We are going to make our next make and take with that paper, but here are some samples with this gorgeous dainty flowers paper and the dainty delight bundle. Oh, there's another one of those bendy, what'd you call it? Bendy pop out. A bendy pop out. I think we should call it a bend and snap after uh <laughs> after uh what's the name of that movie uh, legally blonde oh that's great this is your sue your lady yes. yes i love that with your matching beautiful envelope boy i would feel special to get that huge that beautiful homemade envelope okay. oh my goodness all right let's get out your last make and take yeah. Again, we're using the Dainty Flowers free paper. So we've got four sheets with this beautiful directional paper. Tamara used that one on her card and then these beautiful backgrounds. So these are the pieces I use for your make and takes. And so I created a um, a way to utilize pieces like this. So Stampin' Up! is doing such a fabulous job of every so often in our paper packs now we get a piece like this, which is like a cut and go type of piece, right? You can just cut this up and um, plop it on, the, on a card base and you are like good to go with your card. Um, this also in this pack has these beautiful ovals that you can do the same thing. You can just cut them out and plop them right on your card like this. How easy is that? Done, boom, so nice. So what I did is I figured out a way to utilize one of these pages to get 12 cards. And so that's what um, we're going to do. So let's put our um, card together and then I'll show you how I cut that. All right, so here is our card base. And again, we have a trimmed quarter that goes on, that goes on the card. And again, you could emboss this if you wanted to with an embossing folder, or you could stamp a background, put some words back there. Those are my, my go-to backgrounds. So this is an old olive card base with mossy meadow. And then this is our piece of designer series paper. So everybody has a little bit different of a design, but because this paper is designed the way it is, it's perfect for just carrying the whole front of the card. It like makes your little focal point for you. So this is a two inch by five and a fourth inch piece of designer series paper and then the um the mat is two and an eighth by five and a fourth and this is designed the same size as the trimmed quarter 
so that you, it just will um, line up. So when you put it on your car, you can put it on the left or the right, it doesn't matter, but leave about a half inch right here um, between um, the edge of the card. So this is a three inch strip and this is going to go across. Oh, I don't know, do we want me to check? It's gonna go across like this and it's gonna meet the edge of this, um, the trimmed quarter. And if you want to, you can create a little flag end if you have a punch or you can just make it yourself by snipping in the middle. and you can create a little flag end. And put this about an inch or so above and just glue that right on top. And you, this, I gave you a little piece. So what I did on here is I just cut these in half. So everybody has a half of an oval. And this you do have to, to fussy cut and you can do that however you want. You can, um, so some of them are going this way, some of them are going the other way and it looks great either way. Here's my sample. I don't know. Um, my sample has one going the other way. You can, you can attach it underneath this piece or you can put it above this piece. Or you can use it to decorate the inside. If you like the simplicity of this layout, you can um, put this on the inside as a as a de decoration. I don't see it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so our greeting is going to go on this little circle right here, and I used this little punch. Called the best label and I punch some of that gold shimmer paper. And this just makes a great little um, piece that you can mount on the back of different shapes and you get a nice, a nice little effect. And just a little bit of shimmer goes a long way. All right, and then when you've decided what greeting you want to go on there, okay, now we're stuck. <laughs> I got really generous with the glue there. I'm gonna stamp my greeting later, but you can pop this little piece up with your greeting and then stick that somewhere along where all of those papers um, connect. So again, you have a nice little template that you can use. And then we've got these little brushed butterflies, brushed brass butterflies Lovely. to attach to the card. I can't currently find the sample, the finished sample, but you have a picture of it on your um, PDF. So you can reference that, but Everybody's going to have a little bit different uh, focal point here. And it's amazing how when you cut these flowers every two inches, you get one of the big flowers. Somebody was thinking this through, right? Mm -hmm. So you two inches, you get this, two inches, you get that. So you get a nice little sampling of the, the larger flowers with the smaller flowers. So it's really fun. Let me show you how you can use this. So... When you have pieces of designer series paper like like this um, from the Happy Forest Friends, where you have the scenery, this is a great also alternative kind of piece of designer series paper to cut into two by five and a fourth, or something like um, something like this one from the same piece. And you're going to have these nice little backgrounds. 
But take a look at this paper. So um, this is from a suite coming up and called Enjoy the Journey, all right? Again, perfectly designed to just cut up and use. And so what I've done, because the front and the back coordinate, I've just come up with this method of cutting up the paper. And so what we're gonna do is start from, since the designs go in two directions, we're gonna cut our five and a fourth from one edge. And then we're gonna turn this around and cut from the bottom this way. Okay, so these are gonna be our focal points. And so we're just going to cut these every two inches. And now you've got 12 focal points with these cute little mountain scenes on there. Okay, and then you take this piece that's left in the middle because usually that middle section is, is where it's like um, blank, right? So you're gonna cut this into three half inch strips. because it's one and a half inches is, is what's left. <laughs> and then you just stack those. And we're gonna cut these into three inch strips and you're gonna get 12 of those. I know some of you are thinking about that beautiful harvest, rustic harvest, harvest hello, um, that suite from the last mini catalog with that gorgeous paper. It has that a piece of paper like this designed for card fronts. So now um, I haven't, yeah, I haven't dug that one back out to try this, but now you've got, you know, 12 things ready to go. So you just need to get that piece of um uh, the coordinating, you know, cardstock. And when you have one piece of eight and a half by 11, um, you can, you know, cut it into um, eight pieces that fit here behind here exactly because you go two and an eighth, two and an eighth, two and an eighth, and then five and a fourth um, twice. So you can get eight per sheet of cardstock. So it's a really great way to take one of those pieces and just make all kinds of cards with it. Oh, there's the sample. Ah, it was backwards. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can I have the rest of the samples? So I took, so here's another one, this sweet, um, a wash with flowers or this paper yes. has one of these pieces on there that you can divide up like that and do a little, use the flip side. So there's that one. Here is that rain or shine paper. So I cut up the that little scene with the happy little flower scene. Here's the forest friends. This is fun. I'm telling you, it makes you look oh at your goodness. paper a little differently. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, these aren't scenes. These two are just, uh, you know, regular background papers, but you can use this layout. Um, doesn't have to be a scene. You can cut up paper and, <clears throat> and use this template the same way. So I hope this could be like a go-to template when you need to make a bunch of cards. You can get 12 from one piece of designer series paper. Who doesn't love that? Who no. doesn't love that? Perfect for if you do kits or card classes. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I love and it. that's what I liked. I love that I could take the, those two pieces of designer series paper and be able to make um, the kits for, um, for this class. So, all right. Um, this stamp set right here, 
on page 57, the ginkgo branch, this one, this is the only card I've made so far. I've stamped in my planner. I just love it. Um, but this is a beautiful, simple um, bundle to use. It's gorgeous. And it has great greetings for sympathy on there. So if you've kind of overlooked this one, take another um, peek at it. Here's the bundle with that paper that I just used. And I don't have the stamp set for this yet, but I, I have the paper and all the embellishments and it's it's just beautiful. This is gonna, it's just like bright and happy and um, scenery like we haven't had before. So this is a great um, pack of paper to add to your kit if you, um, to your stash, I mean, if you don't have anything that's like that, um, where you might wanna make kind of some outdoor cards. This is enjoy the journey, some beautiful twine. And then this is a fun embellishment. These enamel dots, they're nice and thin. You could color on them. It's, um, it's a great suite with great bright colors. Look at this color combo. Pumpkin, mango, garden green, coastal cabana, melon mambo, highland heather, polished pink and starry sky. Happy, happy, happy. Okay, we are getting to the end of the catalog. You are amazing to so stick with me. All right, this is so unique, this watercolor world. I wish I don't have that one yet, it's on my list, but I did get this Alphabets die set and it is very easy to work with. So if you like words and letters, uh, monograms, you've got a fun <laughs> die set to use. And let's see, do we have any other samples to share? This one was using the- Oh, yes. Other. We've got our framed florets. Ooh, beautiful, beautiful card there. And then this is where the um, those brushes are. And we have this birthday set and Cheryl made another one of these matchbook cards that pops up on the inside. Did you say you got this from um, Sharon? Yes, uh, Sharon uh, Armstrong. Armstrong. Yes. Sharon Armstrong, this is one of her um, cards of yeah. the week. Or was it from no, a, no it, it was, was from, from a, her retreat. Oh, a retreat. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a fun, this is a fun little pop-up card. Hey Robin. Yes. Well, on the previous page with the alphabet set. Yes. Did you and I don't know if you said you had them, but did you find it hard to work with the letters because they're thin? Or would you have any tips for that? I I didn't. I mean, the the card that I made, I used basic white, which is even thinner, and the, they popped out of the dies very easily. Um, and I used my when I was just working with them. You could use the little tweezers that Tamara used, or your um, take your pick tool to kind of hold them while you're putting the glue on, and then getting them to, you know. So I you, use adhesive sheets. Yeah, adhesive sheets would be even even better. Then they would become like stickers. I didn't find them hard to work with. All right, our last um, little suite here is the ready to ride. And I have the paper and the colors. This is a great little um, masculine set. Specialty paper, because one side is embossed, but here's the other, other side. Great designs, kind of looks vintagey, has a nice um, soft suede in there so you can kind of get your browns out. We haven't had paper with brown in it for a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the opposite side is glossy with um, basic gray and black easy to use patterns, very beautiful. And these are some really <clears throat> unique embellishments here. 
um, with the different shapes that we've got like the little bolts and then these little rectangles and then some little diamond shapes. So this is um, neat, not just for this, um, this suite, I can see these on having different uses. Yeah. All right, let's see, how'd we do? I think we did pretty well. I think so. I think we did pretty well. Yeah, <clears throat> a few more from Perfect. Celebration and that's the, I think was, you went papers? I think we did most of the papers. Oh, I'll take farm. the farm ones, yes. This is cool. Is this yours, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a fun, that's a fun card. And that's just the flip flap card, I yep. think it was called. Thank you. Here's our little adorable owl cards. And then we've got our thanks a bunch with the carrots. That's another um, rubber band, rubber band background. I should have had somebody be secretary for this um, event so that we could write down all the things we wanted to discuss again and or make. We have the beautiful day at the farm paper. See some more of those little guys. Love this paper. I'm gonna stockpile it as much as I can. <laughs> stamp some more animals, just so much fun. Okay, did we show all our samples? I think so. I think so. The one sample from there. Did it. somebody have in the country? No. no. Okay, we thought we did. Um, and here is the beautifully happy little card. This one's really fun to use. And our dandy designs. Oh my goodness. So many fun things to think about. <clears throat> All right. We did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. All right. I'm going to just turn, I'm going to remove that spotlight and look at all your faces again everybody thank you so much for all your time this morning thank you for um sticking with me and um taking it step by step through the catalog I hope that you saw maybe something new I hope that you are excited about a couple things um I hope if you have some of these items maybe you were like oh I want to try this um I hope that you want to um, immediately go get some, um, some of your, uh, supplies out and make some cards because, and that, that's the goal, right? As you get excited. Um, I just thank you from the bottom of my heart for spending time with me. I am giving a big thank you to Cheryl Sorensen and Sue Sheets and Tamara Moore. I think they did an amazing job helping showcase the features of this catalog and um, I just love them all very much. I'm so thankful for them. And again, I will um, upload this video to YouTube at some point, and then I will send you a link because you've registered and there will be a blog post where we showcase um, the, the highlight, the samples. And then uh, if there's something specific that you want to see on a future play date or you want a link to where something might be made, um, just send me an email and we'll um, put some things on the agenda because I'm, I'm excited about doing some more creating immediately, immediately. All right, you guys have a great rest of your day and I am going to stop recording, but if you want to stay on and say goodbye, you can, let me unspotlight myself and